This is the PCB out of a greeting card. And I've cleaned it up. I've removed the batteries, some surface mount resistors and capacitors. I've disconnected the speaker. There were some switches that sprung out from here and would press down on these contact pads depending on uh, a wheel that you would turn on the greeting card that this came out of. And if there were holes in the, the, the wheel, the contact would, uh, the, the switch would make contact with the pad here and the microcontroller could read the state of the switches and play some sound. But I'm, I'm not interested in how it works. What I'm interested in is trying to look at the die that's underneath the epoxy here. I just want to see, can I get access to the die? Can, do I have a way, a, a simple way to obtain access to the die, get images of the die without destroying it completely. Now normally if somebody wants to uh, extract or, or get at the, the die that's underneath this epoxy here, they would be using very strong acids, which I have no desire to use because one little slip up and you could do some pretty serious damage to yourself. So I don't have the equipment uh, or really the knowledge to try and use acids here to eat away at the epoxy. Instead I'm going to go for something a bit more mechanical. This is a package of sandpaper with different grits that I took or I bought from a from the dollar store of all places. I'm going to use sandpaper to slowly uh, eat away at that epoxy and I should be able to get at least close to the dye. And the question becomes, when the die starts to become visible, what then? Do I keep sanding and risk destroying the chip? Do I break out like a, uh, a rotary tool and try to polish away the last few microns of epoxy so I can get at the, uh, the die? I don't know. This is an experiment. We're going to find out. And assuming this works, I'm going to then put this under a microscope and we can see if there are any markings that confirm the identity of the microcontroller as this NyQuest microcontroller that it seems to indicate on the silk screen. So that's that's the plan. So it's going to be as simple as grabbing a piece of sandpaper like so and just do that for a while. And the way this should work is as I'm eating away at the epoxy, at some point I'm going to start to see small bond wires that come from the chip and connect to the PCB. The bond wires sort of have a bow in them. They, they, they go up from the silicon die, bow over to the PCB. Those should be the first thing that get exposed. I should, and I'll, I'll be sanding right through them, but I should be able to see them and then I know I'm getting close to the microcontroller. So this is, I don't know, some very, some interesting grit paper here. I'm gonna start using this and I'm gonna just sand away. And when I start to see bond wires, we'll take a look at what that looks like. <laughs> so, it's been a few minutes and you can see I'm not sanding very evenly because I'm starting to remove this uh, solder mask off of the PCB as well but if we look real close you can start to see the bond wires and this thing barely wants to focus but there are bond wires let me get a pointy thing here you can see there's two there there's two there and it looks like there are three over here. I've already eaten through a couple of them. Now, I am wondering, are these bond wires coming down and the die is here, or are they going out? I think they're coming down, and I guess, I'm guessing the die is gonna be like right here. All right, back to sanding. We're getting there. Just wet the top to make it a little more obvious. You can see, you can see how the bond wires are spreading out towards the top, and they're getting closer towards the bottom, which really 
indicates that the bottom area here is where the dye is and the top half of the epoxy blob is just covering the points where the bond wires connect to the PCB. It looks like there's going to only be bond wires going up, no bond wires coming from the bottom of the die, which in the data sheet for the NY4P, which is slowly being erased from the board as I keep sanding away, uh, there is a version of the die where all the contact pads are on one side, so that's probably what we have here. So it's getting close. I'll keep sanding away. It's boring work, but it'll reveal its secrets soon enough. Things are getting interesting. You can clearly see the microcontroller die. Now I think it's still got one or two microns of uh, epoxy above it but I might be able to look at it as it is right now through a microscope and get a good look at the die. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this as it is for now and I'm going to go grab a microscope and see if I can see anything at all. Here we are under the microscope. We're looking at, I think, the edge of the die. You can sort of see as I move it around here. There's a little shiny spot there where the epoxy has been eaten away enough that you can really see the dye underneath. But you can also clearly see that there is still quite a bit of epoxy to get to the dye. It looks like the bottom right corner. You can also make out the, the grooves of where the sandpaper has gouged or not gouged through the epoxy, which is kind of interesting. We can actually zoom in further, see see what we can see through that little crack in the, the epoxy there. So let's go to the next level. I'm going to have to adjust the focus and center that. Can't really see anything further. Next level of power. That's starting to look a little interesting. That looks like it's a memory structure. Granted, I don't know. Again, I'm very much an amateur here. This is not, not my forte, but that looks the 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 pattern of all those lines like that. I associate with memory structure. What's also interesting is the controls to move the, the plate that the PCB is on um, are on the plate. So as I push down on it a little bit or pull up on it a little bit with my fingers as I go to adjust the position of the plate, you can see it changes the focus. That's my hand doing that, pushing down on the plate. Okay, time to try and remove more epoxy. I'm going to change tactics and I'm going to use a rotary tool with a felt polishing bit here. And I'm gonna see if I can maybe creep up on the die. I'm hoping that this will remove some material, but not a lot of it. We shall see. Is that making any difference whatsoever? You know what I'm kind of wondering? Should I be using... Should I be using, like, a, a, a polish? Should I go get some, like, car polish? I think I'm going to go for another pass. Now when I'm I'm I've got this on the lowest setting possible and I am I am 
actually holding the weight of the uh, the rotary tool and I'm just barely barely touching this thing I, I, I'm trying to remove as little material as possible in fact I wonder if I should be doing this just by hand like this maybe as more of the die gets revealed as the last tiny tiny amount of epoxy is there maybe I need to actually do this by hand but I'm gonna give it another pass real quick and then we'll look under the microscope let's see where we're at we can clearly see that there is still epoxy over the microcontroller so we're not there yet but we can definitely see some structure here What I think we're seeing right here is a bond wire. Yep. You can see that big shiny mess. If you notice, it's in focus when everything else is out of focus. That's that's one of the bond wires that's been uh, ground away. And you can see as we focus down in through the epoxy and then we get the chip itself into focus, you can see that's where the that's a a bond pad. That's where one of the the pads where one of the wires is uh, connected to. And then to the right of that are two pads with no bond wires, but there's a little dark indentation in the middle. Those are the results of probes, very tiny probes that push into the pads when they're testing the chip to make sure it works before they cut it out of the wafer and ship it off to be used in a greeting card. Okay, so still a little ways to go, but we can definitely see a lot of structure of the, the microcontroller. So I'm going to try getting through a couple more layers here. Or I'll, in other words, I'm going to make a couple more passes with the rotary tool, with the polishing bit, with a little bit more of the uh, the polishing compound on it. And I'm going to take it a little bit at a time, check with the microscope, try to get something where the, the dye is really very visible, and then I'll come back and show you. So here's what the finished product looks like. You can see the dye, very shiny. Very small compared to the size of the blob of epoxy. But that is what we'll look at under the microscope. As you can see, a lot of the epoxy is gone now. We can see the, the, the silicon dye. You can see some epoxy is still here in the, the top, top left corner. Uh, I tried, and I, I might still try some more. And just focus on that corner maybe manually you know without with the rotary tool polishing bit but without the tool actually being on but otherwise and you can see you see that light area on the bottom left that is me polishing too hard and just nicking away layer after layer this all this 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 large uniform area at the bottom this is all memory or this is probably a, a program space ROM now in one of these corners I did see some uh, text what what corner was it it's the corner that hasn't been eaten away completely Is that L1102? I think we're going to have to go back and polish some more. Oh, well.
So that was kind of interesting. A, a little look at something that, you know, normally you just chuck in the trash. But now, you know, you realize there's a lot more going on. And also, it's a nice way to test, experiment with uh, getting access to the die so you can look at it up close. Um, this one was just using sandpaper and uh, a polishing bit on a rotary tool, and it exposed enough that you can make out structure. You can you can see the layout of the die. You can identify. You can read markings off of it. So if we didn't have it clearly identified here as an NY4P, well now we know at least we can go online and start looking at NyQuest chips and then look at their data sheets and maybe we will find one that has a similar layout to this. So it's a little a little adventure into what trying to reverse engineer um, chips that are anonymous and contained within some blob of epoxy like this. Yeah, I thought it was interesting.